Hey, so you know how like, if you've ever done any kind of concept art or any kind of work like that, you'll know that there's this method called photo bashing, which is essentially like, let's say you just have like some dude, I know it's not great. You can bring in like a photo of some mechanical thing. You can take that part and be like, oh, that looks like a cool, that looks like an arm thing. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, or like a, or like a chest piece or something. But I hope like you're kind of getting the idea. Like, so I think that you can use the same method in Blender and I'm gonna show you how I used this kind of like photo bashing method onto geometry and then you can get some really interesting shapes and ideas uh, in 3D. So let's jump into that. When I made the video for YouTube and then posted it also to Patreon, on the Patreon I got a question about how I did the textures for this uh, asset because I really didn't touch on that at all. I talked about how I modeled it and things like that but I really didn't touch on how I modeled, uh, how I textured it. So. Let's talk about that. Let's let me just get right into how I created the textures and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So if we hop out of that view and go into the shader editor, let's see, let me select the, yes, it's all, no, that's not it. <laughs> it's all this one. Um, so it looks like the, the roughness or the base color and bump is coming from one thing. And then the roughness is coming from something else. And the roughness is, let's see, traffic light. So the base color is coming from this image. And this one I got from Ian Hubert's Patreon. It, it's like a texture that I extracted from one of the models that he released. And it's just like a thing he made. That's a bunch of little textures and mechanical bits. So you can kind of see like this thing, this little white paint mark is here. So if I select this, this you can kind of see its place there and so i just kind of use this same area over and over for all the different parts what i did more recently is i went in ahead and made a bunch of my own textures in that same way so let's try making a couple poles and pipes using the the textures that i made so we'll have one center pipe here just kind of scale it up and then when you open when you make a new cylinder object it generally has pretty good UV already. So if we go in here, yeah, we can always stretch it out later. So let's actually throw in our first texture right away. If anything, I think these will create good, like just roughness variation textures, if not actual you know, image textures that you can use. So here's what that looks like. Just a weird transformer thing. And these are 4K by the way. If you look, you know, somewhat close, you can really see a lot of nice color variation and color variation can be just translated into roughness variation if you plug it into a color ramp node. So I think even if the the color part of it doesn't really serve you or doesn't give you anything useful, you can at least use the, the roughness variation. So let's take this and rotate it, put it right here and just see how that looks, okay? Yeah, and there's like a seam here and the seams like this isn't a seamless texture So you're not gonna be able to really avoid the seams But in like for example the street light I just made make sure that those are not facing the camera and you can always take something like the seam and like select this part where the seam is and um, Just like move it somewhere else So if we grab it here Move it over here and now it's like a thing, you know now it's like a a uh, I don't know, like a, like a kind of a seam that makes sense. And you can like even extrude it a little. So then it's like, oh yeah, it's part of the, uh, it's supposed to be like that. <laughs> um, but so one thing we don't have is, let, let me go into rendered view and just to cycles. So now that we have this into the color, all right, and let's get the HDRI showing through. Okay, so that looks, that looks kind of interesting. But since this is all the same texture, both of these little surfaces, we can just take this and plug this into the roughness and it'll look probably not like anything until we convert it into a color ramp. And then, oh yeah, still nothing. Let's see, crank the values a little bit. Ooh, okay, so if we crush it in that area, we'll get a little variation. Might have to scale this, so let me just scale it this way, yeah. Ooh, looks cool. And then, oh, you see that right there? The little, it's interesting. If we flip this. Yeah, so now it's showing up in the darker areas. And because it's 
The darker areas are not that dark, it's not going to be as noticeable, so you do have to kind of fine tune the color ramp to make sure you, it hits that spot in the value. But here it's cool, like if you had a more dramatic light, so it can be as subtle with the color ramp as you want, or as dramatic as you want. It's kind of why I like messing with this stuff, like with color textures, because you can really get more out of them. And it's, again, one image, so it's not really taking up a lot of resources. Let's see over here on this scene that we added how it looks. Ooh, okay. Ooh, looks nice. I just like the, again, like the little variation and how the light gets caught and how it reflects the light. Do a bump. Oh, okay, interesting, it automatically did it. And I think we plug this into the height. Yuck, too much. But fine tune it in, bring it in a bit. And there's a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of texture in that direction as well. So that looks cool. Let's try a different one, I'll actually just duplicate it. Okay, so let's do like, Let's take this. Yeah, it looks like a thing. It looks like it could be a thing. So yeah, let's take this again and find a new spot. Let's use a little bit of this one, like that. And then put the seam right there. Ooh, interesting. I think Cube Project is the best one we got. But if we hide this, you know, just as a as an experiment, it's really fun to kind of see where it goes, how it reads, the bottom part right here. That's cool. And because we still have the bump and the color ramp going, we're getting some of that effect as well. Mmm, that's cool. It's like actual dirt and stuff collecting in there. The only thing is that it's kind of up there if we bring it down. So yeah, ooh, wait, I wanna try something. Let's take this and put it right over, yuck, over top of that. But still, like, just getting kind of creative with it. And from a distance, I don't know, I buy it. It looks like a thing. It looks like there's just crap collecting in there because why wouldn't it? It's just, I, I believe in, you know, just do whatever makes the process fun for you. Cause Blender can be really hard. It can be super overwhelming, can be really like, very technical and you can always feel like you're doing something wrong or you're a fraud or maybe it's just me but uh <laughs> you know like whatever you need to do to make the process fun for yourself do it i'm not gonna judge you oh that's cool look at that this is really coming together you know what this looks like it looks like those in the winter time like restaurants outside will have a little like heater thing it'll be like if i scale this up and inset like that it's like one of these things you know what i'm saying like one of those heater things that like are next to the tables. Kind of looks like that. Just, I, I like taking these parts specifically where there's a bend and finding a place for the seam. So even if it's like this, even if it's kind of like, that's why I like keeping the seams inside of these materials. So then you just get a nat natural like transition like that. Or if we do it here. All right, see, it looks like a thing. It looks like it's designed to be that way. All right, let's take this and put it here. Whoa, look at that. You know, and then once you have it like this, you can, you can just like trace off of this. So you could add loop cuts here. Up close, maybe it doesn't read as well, but I just, I think this is super passable. Let's add one more loop cut here. I don't know, this is just a, a really interesting method. And then like, let's say, like we have this thing that we never really used for anything, but let's say if you wanna make a, let's take this, bring it down, and let's see if we can make it look like a switch of some kind. Wait, let him cook. I might've cooked up nothing. <laughs> Yuck, I don't know if that's working. Maybe, maybe it can work like this. If we turn it 90, it can look like some kind of uh, thing you like, you know, gotta turn to. Turn it on. What's the word? It's not a stove top. Like a gas stove, like a gas stove. Yeah, so see, it's got like a little, I feel like I could just sit here and do something like this all day long, just like move UV faces around on different textures and see what happens. Yeah, you know what, do it this way. Yeah. This is getting super detailed, but you get the idea. 
a switch to turn on the fire pit thing. Yeah, let's try one more thing. And we'll use this. This is a super just rusty one that I think will, you know, just great for general rust things, rust life. And I included the edge of the rusty bit here so that you can use that to to make seams. This is cool. Now it looks like a weird, some kind of weird like container. Let's plug this into the, oh yeah, we're definitely gonna wanna plug this into the normal with a bump. To the height. Oh yeah. Oof, look at that. It's cool. Again, the seam. Don't really know much to do about that. Uh, maybe somebody smarter than me can make it seamless if you want to or not, it's up to you. But who cares, that part doesn't see the camera. Oh, and you know what you could do? You could like take the knife tool and just be like, this is kind of what I love about like using Photoshop versus Illustrator. Cause in Photoshop, like if you just want to, if you want a thing, you can just draw it, you can paint it, you can cut it, whatever. And I love that about Blender. It's not like you have to model this thing. You can just, just want that shape, cut it out. If you want a hole there, just cut a hole into it. I learned from Blender Guru that you don't want to like mess with the specularity, just leave it exactly where it is. Let's see what happens if we plug that into the roughness. So it makes a very good like game asset for a creepy little horror place. I think like a weird industrial factory or something. Oh, it's all wet and gross looking. Looks almost like flesh. I hope this was a decent enough kind of demo in the technique that I used to make um, the street light for the Akira render. It was pretty much, I pretty much used the same texture for all of it and really relied on the, the roughness, the color ramp, like for the roughness, the bump, a little bit of bump. And then I think I tweaked the colors. So like put in a curve node, I think. And then you can mess with the colors individually. So stuff like that. Anyway, I'm gonna leave a link to where you can just, if you're on Patreon, you'll just get this. But uh, if you're on Gumroad or something like that, you can just pick these up if you want and have fun with them. Okay, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.